Hello, this is Jerry Master Daniel 96 and today I'm going to be doing a video that talks about the canon and continuity of the expanded universe and this is definitely from the Essentials Readers Companion and it is in the introduction section so I'm going to give you I'm going to read to you the section that talks about it and let's begin and it says canon and continuity Common questions are how real are these stories? Do they count? Did they really happen? The most definitive canon of the Star Wars universe is encompassed by the feature films and the television productions in which George Lucas is in directly involved in. The movies and the Clone Wars television series are what he and his hand-picked writers reference when adding cinematic adventures to the Star Wars oeuvre. But Lucas allows for an expanded universe that exists parallel to the one he directly oversees. In many cases, the stewards of the expanded universe, editors within the licensing division of Lucasfilm, who work with authors and publishers, will ask for his input or blessing on projects. Though these stories may get his stamp of approval, they don't enter his canon unless they are depicted cinematically in one of his projects. That said, something occurs in a canon project to directly contradict a published source. It can reliably be said to have occurred. Extensive records track the growth of the expanding universe, cataloging planets, characters, technology, and events to allow it for a sprawling, believable continuity connecting the published works of the Star Wars universe. It's not perfect. When errors occur, the companion does sometimes call them out. This is not to diminish these tales in any way, but rather to illustrate that the expanded universe is a living document that grows and evolves over time. The Reader's Companion is not meant as a replacement for the experience of reading these works for Sam. Those truly interested in the stories are strongly encouraged to read them whole. No matter how detailed, a summary is no substitute for expecting a story as the author intended. So that's the section from the Reader's Companion, and pretty much, you know, the most definitive was, you know, the movies, the, you know, the films and television productions that George Lucas was involved in with, you know, the six film, the original six films and the Clone Wars series, which, you know, were the higher tiers of canon, which was, you know, G canon and T canon, and the you know, the books and the comics was C canon for continuity canon. And I will link a video down below about that I did on the old canon tier system. So that will be linked down below. And definitely Lucas did allow for the expanded universe to exist and to run parallel with his universe, which... It's true, and he did have, you know, some input in it, and the authors, you know, would ask for his input and blessing on it, and he would approve of it, but at times, you know, like, I mean, he, in the films, you know, Lucas did, you know, bring in things from the expanded universe into the movies, like, for example, he brought in the planet Coruscant, which first appeared in the Thrawn trilogy, and then Ayla Sakura first appeared in the comics, then was carried over into Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. Um, the double-bladed lightsaber was invented before Darth Maul was invented. And another example, Quinlan Voss was referenced in Revenge of the Sith when Obi-Wan says Master Voss has moved his troops to Boss Pity. So those are some examples right there. And another example, in the New Hope Special Edition, Dash Rendar put in the Outrider, which, you know, the Outrider is Dash Rendar's ship from the Shadows of the Empire. And those are some examples right there. And I know there definitely was, you know, where Lucas did override things, like with the whole Boba Fett, Jasta Muriel thing. And then, you know, the... EU, you know, the people, you know, working on the EU and stuff would find ways to make it fit, but then they made the retcon where 
Jasta Maria was a different character and, and Boba Fett took it on as an alias, which I did talk about this in one of my reviews for Legacy of the Force, and they do reference it there, and definitely a, in the Clone Wars did overwrite, you know, things in the EU, and even though it does also, even though TCW is part of both canons, and as a fun fact, Dave Filoni originally considered to have Alpha from the comics before Captain Rex came about, but George Lucas fought, you know, there were too many characters beginning with the letter A, and then Lucas changed Alpha to Captain Rex in the Clone Wars series, and those are just some examples right there, and I know, like, a lot of people like who don't like the EU will say, oh, Lucas never cared about it and stuff, but... When I read to you in this, he actually did allow it to, you know, he did care about it, and then would, and the authors would, at, you know, would get his input and his blessing and stuff. So, and then they'll, you know, lots of the EU haters will say, oh, he didn't like the EU, but he did. If he didn't like it or didn't approve of it. He wouldn't allow the EU to exist, and as I read to you in this, he did allow it to exist, and he did approve of it, and definitely, as I would say, I highly recommend checking out this book, because it is really helpful, and it does have a lot of facts in here, and definitely, I would say, this is like a holy Bible, I would say, and... That's pretty much all I gotta say. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and comment what you think down below and I'll catch you guys next time. May the force be with you always.